All right, we're here. And the question on everybody's lips is, what's on the menu for your review today, Film Tape? Well, it's, of course, the menu from Mark Mylod coming to theaters today. It's, it's here. Oh, goodness gracious. And am I feeling a little bit in a goofy, silly mood? Perhaps. And you were probably asking, why are you feeling that way? And it's because, guys, I might have just seen my favorite movie of the year. I loved the menu from Mark Mylod, and frankly, I did not at all expect to love the menu from Mark Mylod. And the reason for that is the other most prominent film that Mark Mylod has directed is What's Your Number? That really weird sex rom-com thing that I didn't think was super great uh, with Chris Evans and Anna Faris. It was okay, but it's not the menu. And then he's also done a, a little Ali G thing. But other than that, not much experience going on there. So lo and behold, a pretty solid that I loved more than, once again, perhaps any other film that I've seen this year. Do I sound like I'm off of something? Probably, but I promise you that I'm not. It's just pure happiness, uh, an emotion that I don't often get to feel, so just let me have it. And then we move further down and we look at the writing staff, and all of the writing staff, this is, I believe, their first writing credits on a feature film, which is crazy. It's Seth Rice, who this is his first writing credit, and then Will Tracy, who this is his second writing credit uh, uh, after Save the Green Planet, uh, which I guess isn't out yet, but uh, so it's technically this is this is his first writing credit. So I was like, okay, it's a rom-com director who did an Ali G film and like, okay, it, I guess two writers that really haven't done anything. Uh, that's never really a good sign for a film. Lo and behold, here we are. It was a great sign for the film. Let's talk about it. And this is actually hilarious because I'm just learning this now. When I was writing my review on Letterboxd, I was like, this score for the menu is a banger. Very Hereditary-esque. A lot of vibes from Hereditary from the score implemented here. And do you know why that's the case? It's because it's literally Colin Stetson, the guy who did the score for Hereditary. So duh, Colin, if you had done your research before making the review, that would have made sense. But needless to say, I just said it, the score is fantastic, very eerie, very plotting. I know I said that in Banshees, but this is the opposite of Banshees and plotting. It's very like uh, constant, like tension happening, don't know when something's going to set off, but something is eventually at some point going to set off. So before I get into everything else that I loved about this film, I do have to commend the score. Shout out to Colin Stetson. I want him on every film ever. He enhances the experience of every film that I've seen him do. So congratulations to him. Proving that the saxophone, yeah, it's all you really need. This review is all over the place. I don't exactly know how I'm structuring it, but we're just gonna talk about once you see the menu, the trailer for the menu. The thing that obviously stands out is bang. Anya Taylor-Joy, bang. Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy. Two names in the industry that you could argue have never really had bad performances in anything that they have done. And guess what? They're both really, really good here, and the dynamic specifically between the two is magical. It is something to see. The banter between the two of them, the way that they're going back and forth with, at each other constantly is just chef's kiss, absolutely. And on top of those two main performances, everyone else in the film, in the entire movie, and I said this about Banshees on the last review that I did, but it stays true here, it holds steady, is having the time of their life and they all fit in so well. Specifically, I think Hong Chow is really, really good here. And then if you actually go all the way down, uh, there are two sous chefs in the film, uh, played by Adam Alderks and Christina Brucato, I believe, and they're great. And they have probably combined 10 minutes of screen time combined. And they both blew me away with what they were able to convey in such a short amount of time. John Leguizamo is hilarious, and as John Leguizamo is most of the time, but yeah. The, the thing about this is the cast looked like they were having fun filming this movie. Think about it. It's one location and you're all there and you're having fun 
and you're being doing weird stuff and I, I would know I would love filming on there so I loved it I loved it just the absolute chemistry going on in that room is just superb and now this kind of leads into why I love the movie so much and that is because the menu is a type of film that I can't remember seeing in a very long time but imagine back if you will with me there was a point in time in cinema where fun enjoyable thrillers came out that were cheesy that were goofy but also well made i know this might sound like a foreign concept given the current cinematic landscape but you have to believe me there was a point when these were a thing but they're such a rarity now that I literally cannot remember the last time that I've seen one of them. It has to be at least five years, but oh my god, the menu delivered so well. The menu is so cheesy. It's, it's funny intentionally and also sometimes comes off funny unintentionally in the way that it portrays things. But oh my god, it was so heartwarming. It was adorable. Uh, it, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I know I'm sounding crazy heartwarming about a film like The Menu, which if you watch the preview, you know it's not a film that one would usually call heartwarming, but everybody in the theater was laughing all the time. Sure, there were only six of us, but we were all laughing. Maybe we're all psychopaths, or maybe the film is just that funny. You'll have to go see that to determine, see it to determine that for yourself. But I, speaking myself, it's hilarious, it's so good, and not because it's a satire. I think people are throwing around the satire term on this a little bit too loosely. Sure, it's talking about something, and it's touching on a very serious issue and subject, but I wouldn't call it a satire necessarily, it kind of borderline, but it's hilarious. It's so funny. The The line delivery is, is great. The things that happen are insane. Even the more um, darker things are again, super, super funny. So this is two really good dark comedies I've seen back to back now, and it's awesome. But more importantly, this, oh my God, it goes to such hilarious lengths. Uh, so blatantly obvious the way in which it goes at certain points in which things that happen on screen are going to be later down the line reincorporated into the story. I loved it. I, you don't see stuff like that at all. And it came off because all of the technical elements are well done. It doesn't come off as tacky. It comes off as intentional. It comes off as a film that's having a good time with itself as opposed to a film that's poorly made. Uh, that being said, moving into what does hold this film back from being in the top tier of films that, in, in regards to my critical ranking, it it is so on the nose. Brazenly so, almost. It is so on the nose more than <laughs> maybe, maybe any other film I've seen this year. There's a scene towards the end that is just the the best thing ever, and also like the me enjoying it super well, but knowing that oh this is just way too there. Uh, but and I can't say it because but it's a scene that involves a cheeseburger, and that's all I'll give you. And it is oh so funny. I loved this film so much. I know this is kind of more of a rant style than anything, but I just I'm sure you guys have to appreciate me gushing over a film uh, as opposed to being super hard-nosed on it and just crapping over everything. I love the menu. If it's near you, please go see it. It is such a great time. Uh, Nicholas Holt's also pretty good. I forgot to mention him, but it is so good. Everyone is caricature-esque, but that's what makes... But that's the thing, right? If this film wasn't so brazenly on the nose, I wouldn't love it in the way that I do. It works to its advantage for my personal preference of the film, but it works against it in the for the actual me looking in a critical eye. And if you want to see me make a video about why I do separate favorites versus best of, please let me know and I will do that because a lot of people do not agree with me on that. But anyways, regardless, at the end of the day, I am going to give the menu a 7 out of 10 but just know that it's in my heart it's a 10 out of 10. In my heart it's a 10 out of 10. Please go see it. It is all oh, the ride of your life. Anya Taylor-Joy is great. Rafe Fiennes is great. All of it is wonderful. 
go see it now if you can. Uh, yeah, that's it. I know, I know. Just a glowing, gl just a glowing recommendation, and that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to my somewhat incoherent ramblings about the menu, but I just loved it so much. Next video, who knows what it'll be, but it'll be something. I don't know what it'll be, but it'll be something. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Goodbye.